It was just a small incident during the Battle of Rourke's Drift, but it was an intense one and one of amazing bravery. And here's the paragraph from Donald Morris's classic book, The Washing of the Spears, about the Anglo-Zulu War. The wounded were moaning for water and the canteens were long since drained. The two wheeled water carts stood in the yard and towards midnight, Chard led a charge over the Western Barricade. A group of men boiled up over the wall, firing and stabbing at the Zulus along the back wall and smashing them down with clubbed rifles, while others grabbed at the Dissel boom and pulled the cart over to the enclosure. It was too large to hoist in, but it drained through a valve and a leathern hose, and they led the hose over the wall and slaked there first. My guest today, Colin Matheson, was so inspired by that single paragraph in the book that he decided to base an entire graphic novel on it. Even if comic books aren't your thing, I think you'll really enjoy this interview with Colin. He goes in depth on his research, his passion for the Anglo-Zulu War, and other comic books that you may not have heard of that cover the war. I started off by asking him what was so special about this small incident? Why did he find it so compelling? Partly the reason, Chris, I'll be honest, is if you look at the size of the washing of the spears, it's a huge tome of a book. And trying to draw a, a graphic novel based on the whole Zulu Wars would have taken absolutely forever. Where that wee paragraph you read uh, on the, the water cart sortie is barely you know, two or three lines. And I thought, well, if ever there's an opportunity to actually sort of develop a storyline within a very small overlooked incident, you know, there, they, they, you know, there it was. I'm a big reader of the uh, George MacDonald Fraser Flashman books. Take the bloody thing! I don't want it! Take it! Uh, and, you know, he's a great talent for sort of uh, marrying up factual incidents and real people, along with, obviously, Harry Flashman character. So I kind of thought, maybe I'll do that, um, you know, and try and get some storytelling in there and develop the characters uh, for, for a comic book rather than some, you know, historical article. You've obviously done a bucket load of research for this. Sort of how did you go about researching broadly the Battle of Rourke's Drift, but then more specifically this water cart sortie? Because, you know, like I say, there's only a paragraph or so in Washing of the Spears. How did you then take your research forward? It was interesting because, you know, what I'm talking about really is sort of two versions of the story. So originally uh, it was before I actually went out to South Africa. So I'd only seen Rock's Drift um, from the movies and documentaries and, of course, lots and lots of reading. So I tried to piece together as best I could, you know, the actual layout um, of, of the Rock's Drift, the perimeters and everything as best I could. Uh, in those early days, I couldn't find a you know, satisfactory image of the water cart itself. So I actually had um, um, a water, um, a William Britton's model, you know, the toy soldiers. So I actually used that as reference material originally for the water cart. But in terms of the actual action, uh, as you rightly say, it's very, very brief. I think Hook um, gives a very brief account uh, about we sort of fetched some, uh, fetched some water in. But the more I read, there was some confusion or doubt as to who actually took part in the sortie. Uh, was it three or four members or, f or more? Uh, was it Bromhead or was it Chard who actually led the sortie? And as a comic storyteller, that was actually interesting. You know, I could actually make something out of the dynamics and mystery as to who actually took part. Uh, I think in the wider you know, concept or wider scope of uh, Rock's Drift and Zulu Wars, it's a f fairly minor incident. Um, so it had been possibly overlooked, maybe it wasn't important enough uh, or, or detailed enough with everything else going on. Uh, but for storytelling and comics, you know, to introduce, you know, you know the actual scene of you know, the soldiers battling the Zulus, why they were there to some small degree, what led up to the, you know, the dramatic action of, of the water cart uh, at the sortie. Well, you know, it seemed to me quite ideal to actually sort of flesh that out a little bit, you know, give the desperation of the soldiers. I, I remember being influenced uh, as a child, seeing the movie at a very young age. And what really struck me, I guess, was two things. One was the, the actual tension, the real dramatic tension of the soldiers behind those barricades fighting for a long time, in desperate circumstances. And the Zulus and their bravery, sort of relentless, you know, and then just attacking and, and the respect shown to both sides. So I tried, you know, to try and, you know, replicate that in some way uh, with, with the comic in the storytelling device itself. And I understand that uh, watching reenactors and talking to them really helped you get the, the look and feel of the graphic novel right, is that correct? Back in 99, to be honest, which is a long time ago now, it was the you know the 120th anniversary of, of the battles in the Zulu War. And the diehards, uh, you'll be familiar with, I'm sure, you know, led ably by Tim Rose and at the time Graham Gilmore. Um, I'd, uh, I, I was vaguely aware of them, I think, from some magazines. But luckily for us, we took a family trip to English Heritage at the time in the UK, 
were doing big reenactment events called History in Action. And the diehards were there with Ian Knight, uh, who had recently bought some of his Osprey books to start with. And unbeknown to me at the time, but they're actually film, filming some additional scenes um, to go with the Blood Mountain documentary they made for the 120th trip, which is worth worth anyone checking out if you, if you haven't seen it. Much to my family's delight, I, I spent the whole time sort of stalking the diehards and the Ian Knight uh, around their encampment and taking multiple photographs to get you know, the uniforms right, and Martini Henry's and everything, chatting to Ian about, you know, about you know, just the Zulu Wars. I was a bit of a fanboy, I'll be honest. <laughs> And I think he was a bit uh, either embarrassed or a bit uh, bemused by this chat, this uh, adult Scotsman chasing him around this uh, reenactment show. But th- th- there you go. <laughs> so, but, but through that, I struck a bit of a correspondence uh, with Graham Gilmore at the time, and he was very kind enough to send me some additional photographs taken on location off their 120th trip, uh, which obviously had the, the action scenes of them and the Zulus reenacting the Battle of Isanwana. So I found that extremely useful. You know, up until then, I my sketchbooks were starting to slowly fill with soldiers. You know, copied maybe from photographs and things in the historical books. But as you know, off the off the period, they're, they're a bit dull. Those photographs because they're just you know, people stood and you know posing, you know, looking for, very for, for, stern. Very much so, yeah, for the family portraits. So for a comic, it had to be full of action and you know more you know d- 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 dynamic scenes. So that's where those photographs from from Graham and the Diehards proved very very useful. Um, so you know with those and the more little figure work, I slowly started to piece out the, the water cart. Although I should say, Chris, that when I started the water cart, I assumed it'd be like a one page or a two page episode because it was so brief. Uh, it wasn't until I came down to draw it to sort of start fleshing out to be a bigger project. So the original you you independently published is that right? Sort of two thousand two, two thousand and three. What's different with the new one? What what can people expect? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the original one, Chris, um, it sold out a long time ago, and it um, it's actually kept on popping up on eBay uh, for 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 huge sums. Well, oh well, but ten times you know whatever it originally cost the cover price. When I finally did go to South Africa, my first trip was two thousand and ten. Uh, with Ian Knight, one of his tours, and I met some wonderful people there and had great experiences touring the whole battlefield sites. Uh, and that really inspired me to, you know, to me return to the comic. A few people were asking about it. They couldn't get hold of it. Um, I, I kind of let that lie for quite a long time. And it wasn't until really my, my subsequent trips and I got, you know, got to know the Zulu people a little bit more and inspired by them. And I kind of felt the original comic, you know, I hadn't really done enough for their perspective. You know, I'd done a little bit to show the balance, hopefully, between both sides. But I felt that the Zulus, and particularly the impact of the battle and the whole Zulu wars, that should be reflected more in the comic itself. I decided then to sort of embark on, you know, going back to the originals, remastering the artwork, uh, which involved any little mistakes I'd noticed with the uniforms or or the sleeves or whatever uh, I tried to correct. Um, and a friend of mine, Matthew Sof, um, he was getting into comics and colouring comics, and he coloured one or two short strips for me. And I felt, well, black and white of the originals is, is fine, but it's fairly simple. Colour would really enhance it and bring it alive. So he became, came on board. He, he's also got a big love of the period and you know pith helmets and such like. So we had a big blast, um, you know, colouring it. You know, but I'm sure he got a bit fed up of me because by this time I was getting more and more deeply into the history and the authenticity. So we'd send back things and say, well, yes, you know, the collar of that uh, uniform should be a deeper green, you know, for the, you know, and so forth. All oh, right, OK. So uh, we went backwards and forwards. Um, but he made a fantastic job. The original two-part water cart has all been remastered uh, and recoloured. But with that experience of meeting the Zulus and trying to get more into their perspective of the whole brand new story dealing with the aftermath, it's a 16-page story um, told from both the viewpoints, one of the British defenders uh, dealing a bit with post-traumatic stress uh, of the battle, and then the Zulus from a perspective of a, a young boy and girl um, who are still waiting for, the, for, their, for their fathers to return from the battle you know, and maybe not accepting what's happened to them. Um, and then bringing those two factors together in, in possibly a tragic circumstance. Um, I, don't, I don't spoil it <laughs> for you, but uh, uh, I've tried to be you know, as balanced as I could. And, and for, this second, for the new story as well, because I'd been to Rock's Drift several times by then, um, hopefully it's more you know, accurate in the scenery and the landscape and so forth than the original. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Be sure to get your tickets for the Clash of Empires exhibition. It's currently happening. The symposium, which is where a lot of people are going to come and give talks, is happening between the 12th and the 15th of this month, July 2023. I'll be there, so will Colin, as well as greats like John Laband and Ian Knight. Just go to clashofempires.org slash symposium to find out more about that. And if you want a copy of my book about the Anglo-Zulu War, you can get it for free when you sign up over at redcoathistory.com newsletter. All right, guys, take care.